Hey there and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 4 review. And today we'll be talking about the highly anticipated 100th episode of Miraculous, Ephemeral. Which is essentially a what if scenario that examines what would happen if Ladybug and Cat Noir discovered each other's identities. And from the get go, we knew that this episode was supposed to be pretty big and important. After all, it was the 100th episode of the show. And thus, it was expected that important plot points with lasting consequences would crop up in this episode. And honestly, if you view it in that light, I think that this episode was a little bit of a disappointment. Seriously, how many times are we going to get swerved and faked out before this type of plot point gets overblown? It was only really revealed a week or two before it aired that this was a what if episode. But because the hype had already been well established, I think it was hard for a lot of fans to believe, especially when some ambassadors tried to justify it, or play down how there were no consequences at all. It was a mess of expectations. I mean, Jesus Christ, parts of these episodes felt like they were taken straight out of the Cat Blanc script and then altered slightly to make it a little bit different. But we'll talk about those scenes a little bit later when we get up to them. For now though, let's jump into the episode. We start off the episode with a classic Gabe basement monologue to Emily, telling her that all the evil stuff he's been getting up to has been all for her and that he'd be willing to do it a hundred times over. Dank. Because nothing says romance, like talking to your dead wife's refrigerated corpse in your evil villain basement as you plot to ruin people's lives, and completely erase everybody and everything from existence, only to replace it with identical copies so that you feel less lonely. I swear that this season has moved him up a couple brackets of selfishness and evilness. Dude's becoming unhinged. And it kind of seems a bit Thanos inspired at this point, remaking the universe to suit his own goals. Also, what's the point in keeping her body here? If you weren't going to bring this specific body back to life and you're willing to genocide the entire world and create replicas, why have her there anyway? It just feels like this was a lot of unnecessary renovation work where you could have had a much smaller greenhouse to store your butterflies and a nice outside grave for your wife instead of two evil lairs in your attic and your basement. I mean, how much did all this cost? Jesus. We then move on to a scene with Gabriel and Adrian travelling to the launch of Gabe's 100th collection, which is in memory of Emily, before Gabe feels a disturbance in the force and tells Adrian that he needs to do this press conference alone. Jesus, throw him in the deep end much? And also that he can go akumatize the producer guy who's mad that he dropped a single coin down the drain. And also here we get more of that Gabriel rubs his ring whilst he gives Adrian's orders with Adrian obeying him story thread. And honestly, I'm not sure what to make of all this. A lot of people over the years have said Adrian is a senti monster. And I think that this scene kind of does support that. But also, I wouldn't put it past them to have this be a mega red herring and actually have no relevance just to build up the suspense and hype surrounding it. It wouldn't be the first time that the writing teams tried to subvert expectations and take a story in an unexpected direction whilst also laying false clues so to speak. A good example is the Chloe redemption, which they kind of hinted at when she got the miraculous early on but then they subverted things and made her a villain instead. I mean, who knows? Maybe the rings are just magical and have some kind of effect on Emily's family? But in any case, I think the writers know that they're trolling us hard, and I equally hate it and love it. So we'll see. Anyway, at the press conference, the reporter asks a kind of classless question to Adrian. Hey, what do you think about this collection being dedicated to your dead mum? Remember? Your mum, who's dead? Remember how you don't have a mum anymore, kid? Jesus, poor kid is 14 years old. Why the hell is he fronting a press conference for a fashion launch and then having to deal with the grief of his mum getting brought up again? Gabe did him dirty here, throwing him to the wolves. We then see that the producer's been akumatized into a giant golden safe who flies around turning people into coins and that Ladybug has assembled the entire team to try and take this guy down. And of course, they do, and all is right in the world. And this sequence was actually a lot of fun. Although I am a sucker for the big team up moments. Sue me. And I thought it was actually interesting that we saw Adrian all chill about the team beating a villain without him again. It feels like an odd choice as it would have been a good entry point to build up some more aggressed angst. And it makes me kind of nervous that they're just going to randomly drop that storyline altogether. Wouldn't be the first time. And then as Ladybug gets Viperion's Miraculous back in the sewers, because they really do love the sewers, honestly if they ever have a secret base it should be built down here. It's practically their second home at this point. Sue Han turns up and rips her a new one for using so many Miraculouses when Cat Noir would have been enough and that she needs to know his identity as she is the Guardian. 
And I know that the episode's gonna make him seem like an idiot that doesn't understand because adults are all idiots, apparently. But he has a point. I mean, she's the leader. She needs to know, doesn't she? I mean, if she got akumatized, it would be all over anyway, so there's no real risk of her knowing compared to anybody else. But despite her stupidity, at least she agrees to let him find out who it is, even if she doesn't know. And then her and Viperion plot together to learn Cat Noir's identity and then for Luca to reverse time so that only he remembers and thus he can tell Suhan. And I think this would have been the right moment, the perfect moment, to reveal that he knows who Cat Noir is anyway and tell her the truth. I mean, he doesn't have to tell her the full truth that he knows both identities. But god, it's better than going through with this randomly convoluted plan, surely. I mean, there's nothing she can do about it anyway. Not like she can wipe his mind. There's no real harm in knowing. Just tell her, dude. God. Anyway, despite that, they go through with the plan, and to make a long story short, Adrian reveals himself. And side note, it felt a little bit icky about how easy it was for Ladybug to manipulate Cat Noir into revealing himself. And if it wasn't Adrian, she would have had no hesitation in using him completely and continuing with her plan. Kinda sad. I mean, yeah, she wasn't gonna learn his identity and keep it a secret whilst not sharing hers, but I don't know. I just remember when Ladybug really fought for Master Fu to treat him as an equal and explain the guardianship to him. And it just feels like we're moving further away from that as we go. It just felt a little bit out of character for Marinette. But, of course, because it is Adrian, this breaks Ladybug's brain, causing her to forget to ask Luca to reverse time. But come on, Luca. Have some initiative, mate. He already knows who they both are at this point, so why wouldn't he reverse time? He knows what Marinette is like. He knows that she was going to have a meltdown when she finds out that Cat Noir is actually Adrian. And she wouldn't even remember if you wound back time against her will. <sighs> Big fail here from Luca. And then he acts like it was all her idea not to go back in time. I'm pretty sure she just forgot to say anything. When she was thinking rationally, she wanted to not know. So maybe use your critical thinking skills and don't listen to her when she's in confused simp mode. Ugh. But this leads into a story thread that I actually really enjoyed. Marinette has doubts now that she knows who Cat Noir is, with her trying to reconcile the differences between Adrian and Cat Noir and getting worried about which one is the real one. And whilst I was slightly disappointed we didn't get to see Marinette explore her feelings for Cat Noir and just outright stating that she doesn't view him that way at all and kind of borderline hating on him, I still thought this was a pretty good approach. And then of course Luca comes to the rescue to make her realise that it's actually a good thing that Adrian is Cat Noir and that she should appreciate him even more now that she knows the truth. And so she continues to watch him, learn about his Cat Noir side, fall for that too, and then reveals herself, where Adrian's pretty thrilled that Ladybug is actually Marinette, and just like in Cat Blanc, the two embark on a cute little mini relationship. Which is instantly spoiled when Gabe overhears Adrian call her Milady over the phone, and since obviously only one person in existence has ever used that phrase, Gabe deduces that Adrian must be Cat Noir. If it was me, I probably would have assumed my son was just a bit of a neckbeard. Although, the look of fear and despair on Gabe's face would likely have been echoed on mine anyway. The next morning, Gabe wakes Adrian up and, by the way, Adrian needs to invest in some pyjamas, or at least take off his shoes to sleep. Famous fashion designer for a father, and he doesn't even bother to get the kids some pyjamas? For God's sake, you have enough money to build a goddamn butterfly lair and a glass coffin for your wife's body that you're not even going to use. And yet you can't muster the effort to ensure your son sleeps comfortably. Or at least teach him to take off his shoes. Jesus! And then, like any good parent, he lures him into his underground garden that serves as a creepy shrine to Emily, his other parent, where Adrian's going to be scarred for life seeing her corpse, whilst his dad possesses him with a magic butterfly and steals his ring. And honestly, this is where it got a little bit samey with Cat Blanc, and where I realised that they're going to reverse the hell out of this episode completely and utterly. Not a single plot point will survive. <sighs> it was fun whilst it lasted. But at least Gabe's new costume was really cool. Also, we got more of that ominous ring stuff. He akumatizes Adrian, who resisted initially, but then falls under his spell once he rubs the finger where the ring would have been and gives him orders. Hmm. Now I'm wondering maybe if that theory has been right all along, and this is not some kind of misdirect. Because the more I see of this stuff, the more I'm actually starting to get convinced that they might actually go in this direction. Meanwhile, Carefree Marinette arrives at the cinema for her date with Adrian, only to be confronted with Gabe wearing his fresh new costume, 
very much inspired by Black Panther, and Adrian, who's been given one of the shittiest costumes I've ever seen, who has the power to speed up time. Using her lucky charm, she sends a picture of the time that Luca needs to send Sass back to to Luca, as well as telling him where to find the snake bracelet, before Gabe finally claims her miraculous, and then just sends her flying. I mean, did he have to throw her so hard? Harsh. Although, in hindsight, he's been prepared to hit a home run with his son before, and possibly mind control him his entire life, so anything's possible, I guess. Anyway, Luca bursts into her house and runs up to her room to find Sass, who tells him that he can use his power to bring them back to that point in the past, before it's revealed that Gabe made his wish, and the world is ending. <laughs> and that was pretty dark. And side note, why is Trix here? Is this an animation error, or did something happen in an unaired episode that we don't know about yet? Although since there's literally only one episode left that she could feasibly give her Miraculous back to Marinette in to explain this, it's probably just an error. Anyway, Sass reverses time, and all is well. Except for the fact that time has gone all flippy floppy. But never fear, because now Marinette knows how to hack and reprogram a satellite that controls all clocks and electronics in the world. Somehow. <laughs> yeah, sure. I guess she's just a super genius at this point. And then she uses her magical powers to send all the time-lost monsters back home. <laughs> and if you can't tell, I thought this ending was stupid. But I understand why they did it, and I guess it's okay if you don't think too hard about it. And it was cool to see Joan of Arc in her Ladybug costume. And also that whole infamous rising sun flag scene? Yee. I'm not even going to touch that with a 10-foot pole right now. Maybe in a different video, but for now I'll just say... Bit tone deaf. We then finish off the episode with Ladybug and Catwa going back to Earth and nothing changing at all besides Ladybug telling Su Han to shove his opinions up his ass. So that was lovely. I love it when my story points have no consequences and are erased by time travel. <sighs> oh, and we got to see the long way to return of sad boy Cat Noir. But again, who knows if that's going to have any real relevance going forward at all. I mean, I hope so, but who knows. And honestly, I'm just getting sick of these stupid reveal fakeouts. They're getting so old. And then, that brings me to the end of the review. And I give this one a solid... meh. I mean, it was good at times, but Jesus, I hate how they keep not pulling the trigger on a reveal. If you're not going to do it, then don't do it, but stop teasing. And it almost feels like it's going to take away from the real reveal when it actually happens. And that's going to kind of suck in my opinion, if everything's perfect after they know their identities. I mean, we potentially have a whole nother season left of this giant arc, and it's going to be disappointing if they have the reveal early, and then everything's just hunky-dory. But at the same time, it's going to be so, so incredibly frustrating if they leave it too long. And I mean, I feel like it's already becoming a little too long. So they better not save it for like, at the end of season 5. That would be torture. But, as always, those are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? Like it? Hate it? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know.